Our next speaker, Professor Mazen Qumsiya, is a Palestinian scientist and author. He's the founder and director of the Palestine Museum of Natural History and the Palestine Institute for Biodiversity and Sustainability at the University of Bethlehem. He is a professor, has a PhD in biology, and is also an author. He's wrote, written over 30 books and published hundreds of articles in reputable journals. Since moving from America to Palestine in 2008, 24 of his closest friends have been murdered by Israel. He was also arrested on numerous occasions as he was and still is a staunch advocate for Palestinian rights in occupied Palestine. Please give a warm welcome to Professor Mazen. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you, to all of you. Peace, peace means with justice, as Martin Luther King said. Peace means that we have to work for it. It's not going to be given to us. Freedom is never handed on a silver platter to us. I acknowledge you all. I acknowledge indigenous people everywhere, whether in the United States, what became known as the United States, unceded territories that were stolen also, also here, also in Palestine. I am part of a network of indigenous people that we are working for freedom, for human rights, for justice. And when I look at your faces, diverse faces, that gives me hope, because we saw who are the enemy. The enemy are a minority, a tiny minority that control this world. And that profit, profit from like the deals between the military of Australia and Israel providing weapons for genocide. The victims are always the people. Wars have been a climate issue also. Wars have been environmental issues. The largest contributor to climate change has been the military, Israel actually produced more greenhouse gases in those six months than many European countries as a whole country produced in terms of cars, automobiles, etc. It's, it's really a shame. Yes, shame. I am from Bethlehem. Bethlehem is in the West Bank, as you know, part of Palestine. Gaza Strip is part of Palestine. That is why I love the call, Palestine, from the river to the sea. Palestine. From the river to the sea, Palestine, Palestine must be free. And we have been calling for that from day one, from our first intifada. I wrote a book about that, intifadas that we had. When was the first intifada? 1880. 1880. We had. 14, this is 15th Intifada, 14 before this one, before this Gaza ghetto uprising. And I insist to call it the Gaza ghetto uprising because Gaza Strip is a, basically a concentration camp, a people warehouse. We have been fighting this colonial settler system, not a military occupation. I urge you not to use just Military, yes, military occupation is part of the problem, but it's displacement, settler colonialism, which you all in Australia are very familiar with it and its symptoms, including the fact of killing the indigenous people, the fact of labeling them as terrorists and quote unquote troublemakers. Well, yeah, yeah when, uh, when the Minister of Defense said we are cutting water, electricity, food, fuel, medicines on Gaza because we're dealing with human animals. I am proud to be a human animal. Yeah. Okay. If that is what is in his view. So I changed my Facebook profile since October 7 to read the human animal. Animals are actually much more 
decent than any of the kind of actions that this Zionist regime has been doing. Intentionally targeting children, intentionally, intentionally targeting journalists. Some five to seven percent of medical personnel were killed. Civilians only three percent. So Israel is intentionally destroying the truth, destroying medical care, and destroying fellow professors at universities. As you know, Israel destroyed the universities in Gaza. 90,000 students have not been able to go to any universities who no longer exist anyway. What we have to do as human beings is look at this and say, what is my role? What is your role? You are doing it, by the way. I tell people, if you wonder what you would be doing during the Armenian genocide or during the uh, you know, Nazi Holocaust ge uh, genocide of gypsies and communists and Jews in Europe or during the Rwanda genocide, if you ever wondered what you would be doing, you are doing it now. Whether you are apathetic outside this demonstration, or you are like here showing up and doing something. And, and I must say that we have a choice. And, and I even predicted in one of my books 20 some years ago, 23 years ago, I predicted what would happen, this Gaza ghetto uprising. And I said there is the two roads, the road we have been going on, which is continuous obliteration of the Palestinians and all indigenous people, and not acknowledging, not really truly in our heart, acknowledging we're all fellow human beings and start traveling another road. If we stay on this road, it's finished. We are not going to, it's not just Palestinians. Palestine is only a small stop, by the way. It's coming. It's coming here in Australia. As you know, the regional war that already started in the Middle East why do you think Congress just approved $94 billion, including three areas, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan and the Indo-Pacific? My wife is from Taiwan, by the way. And <clears throat> why, why are they doing this? They want to start a world war. And the trilateral agreement between Australia, the UK, and the US the AUKUS agreement, as it's called. What is that about? It's preparing for a world war. I assure you the next world war will be the end of us as humans. We won't have this beauty. We won't have this culture. This is the choices we face. We either continue down this road that has produced so much destruction around the world, not just in Palestine, or we take the other road, which you all are pushing for, in gathering here weekly. What we are doing in Palestine is, of course, giving hope to people. You heard we started, my wife and I, what is my wife, by the way? She's here in the audience somewhere. Did you take him? Or, there she is. Uh, today, by the way, is our 40th wedding anniversary. So, happy wedding anniversary. And, uh, she and I donated what we saved in the U.S. to start. Uh, we donated a quarter million U.S. dollars to start this institute, which we have been volunteering full time at. Uh, seven days a week. It's an institute for biodiversity and sustainability. It's interested in sustainable human and natural communities. So we urge you to come and volunteer with us if you like. You can also volunteer online from a distance, but you're welcome to come to Palestine. We offer room and board for volunteers. We don't expect you to come join us in the demonstrations unless you want to be arrested. <laughs> but, uh, but certainly what you do here in Australia is very, very